Hello, I'm Rob Fried from the New American Baccalaureate Project, and here's part two of our Village Commons Initiative, creating enrollment streams from area high schools. To engage high school students who are not currently applying to your college, we need a careful, sensitive approach. Those with high potential who are not in the four-year college-bound group need help to raise their aspirations and become college ready. But first, they have to believe that a liberal arts college is for them too. In our first video, we talked about how low expectations, fear of high tuition and student debt, or the need to see a direct link between a college degree and a good paying job, and for some, the feeling that they would not fit in with a college scene. Who are these other students we're talking about? Along with the children of recent immigrants and those from lower income families, we find young people whose high intelligence is masked by their disaffection with school. They include the cherry pickers who shine in the classes that truly interest them and blow off those that don't, ending up with lousy GPAs. They are often rebellious, intolerant of what seems meaningless, unpressured by parents demanding high grades at all costs. They're ready to count themselves out of higher learning because they don't see anyone who wants to count them in. We lose these kids at our nation's peril. Their unrecognized, scruffy genius can lead to cynicism, resentment, and the lure of demagoguery. But given a chance to prove their intelligence in meaningful ways, they can rise to amazing heights. Hard-pressed, underfunded high schools feel they have to cater to honors and special needs students, leaving those in the middle to make the best of what's left, and many stop trying. They won't all rise to the challenge of a liberal arts college, but we think a lot more of them might do so if we were able to reach out to them in the right way. Many college recruitment and admissions people are oriented to their usual feeder high school or to affluent college-oriented families and pay less attention to non-traditional students from surrounding neighborhoods. A dynamic partnership between your college and regional high schools begins with questions like, how many of your students are now working well below their potential? Who are the students who might benefit greatly from a four-year college but don't have the support at home to encourage them to apply. Are some quite talented kids blowing off high school because they can't see how it relates to their lives? Which teachers and guidance people have a strong affinity for these students and enjoy their company? How would the high school benefit if more students were to enroll in and graduate from your college? What other ways can our college serve your high school and community? Once several high schools show interest in this partnership, it's time to engage a community organizer type person as a liaison between the college and high school. The kind of person who is a team leader in city year, for example. She or he should have a warm, engaging, upbeat personality a belief that lots more young people can, under the right circumstances, see college in their future, and credibility both on campus and in area towns and neighborhoods. We at the New American Baccalaureate Project can help select and train this person and guide their activities linking high schools with your college. Here's a new perspective on students and community. Students from non-college-going families may want to stay close to their homes and take on issues of local importance as part of their studies. They may want to apply what they've learned rather than cram for exams and are looking toward careers rather than grad school. They value friendship networks forged in K-12 and are eager to learn while helping others learn. The isolation anxiety and depression that many college students face is especially harmful to these kids. We encounter this, we counter this through creating a vibrant, collaborative college environment. 
colleges already offer social and counseling support, but we must also bring a sense of community into the classroom. We have no illusions about the complexities of this crisis. High school students don't easily transform from apathetic kids who mostly come to be with their friends into highly motivated learners. Trust and self-confidence aren't built overnight. But young people have an amazing ability to change direction if offered the right combination of challenge and support. And we are confident this is precisely what an outreach coordinator can do for your college. So here's what we figured out so far. One, high potential underperforming high school students need to be reached early so that they can get more out of high school and spend several years becoming ready for college. Two, peer groups have a tremendous influence on learning. We need to invite students to bring their friends along with them. Three, curiosity sessions held during lunchtime or study hall introduce students to learning that is fun, informal, spontaneous, and mind-expanding. Four, Students need to be part of planning these activities so they see that we respect their ideas. Five, when they meet together on campus, groups from area high schools energize each other. Six, college student mentors can help students raise their communication skills without grading them. Seven, once these students have self-identified as potential college enrollees, their teachers can encourage them to higher standards of work. Eight, local employers, religious and community leaders can encourage the students to make the connection between higher learning and a good life. Nine, parents come to campus and are coached on how to apply for scholarships and grants. Ten, Area foundations and corporations can be tapped for scholarship aid to students. The net effect of this community approach, this outreach beyond attracting new cohorts of students, is to position your college as a center for community empowerment and democratic citizenship, a true village commons. By reaching out to students and families who are felt culturally or financially excluded from the liberal arts, we add new populations of rural and working class Americans to our striving for equity and diversity in higher education. This is just the kind of conversation that we wanna facilitate among colleges in our Village Commons Network. We expect to learn a lot from you. In part three, we examine gen ed changes that lead to high rates of graduation for first generation working class and minority students and that make their friends and siblings want to apply to your college. Thank you. And again, you can reach me with your questions at rfried at uvei.edu.